home prices making their fifth monthly increase, according to S&P's latest Case-Shiller report. Year over year, they're still down, but the smallest decrease in almost two years. Joining us to break down those numbers, talk about those underwater mortgages, is a co-author of the report, Robert Schiller. Bob, always terrific to see you, particularly on a day like today. Let's start with what Brian was talking about, about one in four homeowners are underwater on their home. Bob, is the critical thing there the psychology of walking away where it becomes acceptable? And do you worry about that as something that could maybe put an end to the recovery in prices that we've seen? Well, I'm big on psychology and economics, but there's more to psych than just psychology here. If you can't, uh, if you can sell your house, you don't walk away from it and, and get money back. You don't walk away from that. The people who walk away are the people who can't sell their house mm -hmm. for more than they own. But you're right, it does have an additional psychological effect. Uh, there is a, a sense of wronged, people being wrong that might encourage them to just default, whereas in, their integrity might have prevented that in the past. And there's a sense of, uh, of an unstable market that might also feed into uncertainty. And mm -hmm. it, it's a very complicated thing to understand these price movements. Right. Hey, Bob, it's Brian Sullivan. You know, we had the existing home sales data also on prices yesterday. We just hit the FHFA data. We have the S&P Case-Shiller data, your data. How do you square it? What should we be looking? It seems like we're getting all kinds of numbers, and it's hard to figure out exactly right. where the housing market stands. It is hard, uh, and I think that reflects the fact that we're in a very unusual economy. Unusual in that this is the biggest recession since the Great Depression, and we have the government massively bailing out. We've had, the, you know, the Fed buying the, uh, 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 the Treasury, uh, I'm sorry, the, the uh, securitized mortgages. We have the first-time homebuyer tax credit now extended to existing homebuyers. The, the real problem is people don't know what to think of the longer run because all of these things are temporary. And where do we go from here? And people just don't know. Do you think that the average homeowner, though, Bob, still thinks that home prices will go up in most years than not and will still be right. able to beat inflation over the long haul? Yeah, I know that answer to that because Chip Case and I do surveys of home buyers. Uh, and among home buyers uh, in our June survey, uh, they still have a something like a 5% of median with 5% a year appreciation expected for the next 10 years. Wow. So this long-term optimism has not disappeared, and I think that is helping to support the market. Do you think it's the best data that we'll have in a while, Bob, or a price is going to continue to stabilize? Well, I'm unusually uncertain at this time. <laughs> you mean we got something coming in, then, Bob, believe me. <laughs> uh, we've seen a surge in confidence over the last eight months, and it's not just the U.S., it's much of the world. On the other hand, we do have the shadow inventory of homes. We do have a banking system problem that could bring houses prices down again. Uh, I worry about that. Well, Bob, put it in perspective. Where are home prices historically? It, are they still above average? And what about based on rents and incomes? Well, uh, our our 20 city index is at 146, so that means we're 46 percent above 2,000 levels. But we're about 25 percent below the peak. Mm -hmm. The peak was, I think, abnormal. So you're asking, are home prices high or low right now? Uh, maybe they're still a little on the high side, uh, but they're, you know, they've come down a lot. Uh, and it differs a lot by region. Yeah, I'm asking if I could get a good deal. <laughs> Julie was a little self-serving. I'm sure huh? there are good deals. <laughs> but Bob, there are Bob, some good deals out there. But Bob, isn't, isn't it sort of a catch-22? Trulia came out with a study showing that one in three homeowners they surveyed indicated that if prices started to rise, they may put their house on the market. All these people that are close to negative equity, yeah. if prices start to go up and if interest rates start to go up, what's the risk of all those people dumping their houses on the market to get out of the albatross jacking inventories back up yeah. and sending prices back down and, and a double dip in housing. So you're bringing up uh, what they call in the stock market, in uh, technical analysis, a resistance level. Mm -hmm. You know, when the price gets back up to close to where you paid for it, you might bail out. There is some evidence that that happens in the stock market, so it could happen in the housing market as well. 
The, the, the sense of real excitement that we're going for another ride is there in some people, but I don't know how common it is. It, it's, it's more of a, a, a hope that maybe we can get out of this. Bob, it was great to see you as always. Thank you, sir. Take care of yourself. Please come back very soon. Co-author. <laughs> With the, better news, I hope. <laughs> no, hey, un, you know, you're frank. And we appreciate that. It's Bob. <laughs> Certainty. It's Bob. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bob. Robert Schiller, co-author of the Case Schiller Report and professor of economics at Yale University.